There was a time when I made a video, and at the beginning of the video I said, this video will be about the select and select all function in P5. And then the entire video was about something else. Uh, now I'm saying the same thing, but this video really is about that. And the reason the other video was about something else entirely is what I covered was this idea of selecting by tag versus ID versus class, and what I used that for assigning those things CSS uh, in by writing a style tag or creating a CSS file directly in your HTML file. So now what I want to look at is how do you select from your code by tag, by ID, or by class. Then you have access to elements and you can assign them events or behaviors or change their style dynamically, all sorts of things like that. So let's take a look over here at this particular page. Did I want to come over here yet? No, I didn't. I'm going to come over there in a second. So let's, so, okay, so this, you know, did it go back in time and erase that, but whatever. This here is a, a sort of pretend HTML, some HTML, uh, I can edit this video. It's going to be fine. I'm just going to keep going. Um, so what I want to do is look at how that works. And I'm going to, I'm going to write this out here, I think. So here was the way of creating a selector, like the ID unicorn got this particular style. And if you're doing this instead from within JavaScript, the equivalent of that would be, I erased like I think the wrong thing, but var uh, uh, element equals select unicorn. So in other words, ah, and I did this wrong. In other words, this is what I had before. Select by unicorn. This is, this is CSS. CSS is so select the ID unicorn and assign all sorts of style information here. Now in JavaScript, I'm saying select the item in the, in the DOM element on the page by the ID unicorn, only that's not what I wrote. I forgot that you need this pound symbol to indicate ID. So up here, this should say pound unicorn. Can you see that? You uh, it's, uh, kind of trailed off there. There's a semicolon there. So this is a way of in code selecting a particular DOM element and now this element you can call all the functions you might normally call with a DOM element like change its HTML content, change its style, assign, assign a mouse pressed event. So the reason for me showing this to you which I really probably should have said at the beginning is we have, they have this kind of like big question, which is let's go to co the code here and let me say create p. This is a paragraph made by me. And I'm going to run this code and you can see, look at this. This page has all of this content, a unicorn and rainbows, rainbows, more rainbows, just a plain paragraph the click me button, a canvas, and this is a paragraph made by me. So what I'm suggesting to you is all of this stuff up to click me, this is all content that I wrote into the HTML file. And now, <laughs> I'm so zoomed out. And now down here, these two elements are things that were made in JavaScript. So look, create canvas makes the canvas, create P makes the paragraph, and then here in the HTML file, here is all the stuff that I wrote into the HTML file. So why, why, oh why, oh why, oh why? This is the like, this is the crux of today. This is the existential question that, that, that we all have to ask ourselves. Why would you make a DOM element in the HTML file? Why would you make one in JavaScript? Let's think about this for a moment. Before my answer to you of why you would make one in JavaScript is the reason you would make one in JavaScript is you need to have access to it in JavaScript. So make it in JavaScript and then you know you have access to it in JavaScript. Today, we will, that's not a good enough reason because the select function, the select all function will give you access in JavaScript to something that was in the HTML file. So now you really have both options. And I would say it really depends on how you feel, what your, what your goals in life are, you know, what kind of person you are, what your favorite color is, you know, that kind of stuff. I mean, you can kind of do either and maybe you like making it in JavaScript, maybe you like making the HTML. But I think there are some scenarios where it makes more sense to do one or the other. For example, if there is a lot of kind of existing content that you just want to be on the page when it first loads and you want to be able to really custom 
you know, work on how the, that content is organized and how it flows into a lot of content, it kind of might be silly to have a zillion create P's just to like, uh, and just to like create that content initially. So the initial content of the page and the sort of overall structure of the page, I think that might make sense to do in HTML. If you wanted to have this paragraph, if you wanted to say this is a random number, I, I wonder if I said this already in another video, <laughs> and then said random 100, right? This is something that you would want to do perhaps in, as a dynamic element, right? If your content is, it picks a, a new affirmation every day that it shows on the page, perhaps you might want to create that element dynamically. Of course, you could assign its content dynamically and create it in the HTML, but you know, the point is, you know, you know, if there is something that involves a set of rules or some sort of input, some sort of external data from some source, that might be something that you need to sort of generate in JavaScript. If you wanted on this page there to be a thousand paragraph elements all with random numbers, you wouldn't want to in HTML type p, 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 p a thousand times. You'd want to use a for loop to generate a thousand elements. So I kind of off on this little digression here, well, it's a relevant digression, but um, this is really a question I would love to hear your thoughts on the matter. Like, when do you write your content in HTML? When do you create the DOM elements in JavaScript? Why would you do one for the other? As I make more and more videos, in particular once I get to the data and APIs videos, you're going to see a lot of different scenarios. But for now, let's not worry about answering that question. Let's just look at how it works. So let's say you don't make uh, anything you don't make any DOM elements in JavaScript. You've made all of them here in HTML. How do you apply something to, for example, the unicorn paragraph? Well, with the select function. So now I could say something like unicorn or you know, paragraph equals select unicorn. <laughs> Close this. There's a picture of me on this laptop and it's very distracting. Uh, and I could say paragraph.style you know, background color, you know, F, zero F. So now if I were to run this, you can see here, this is how I was able to address this particular DOM element in JavaScript. So I was able to organize all of the initial content in the HTML file, but call a function on it dynamically in JavaScript. And you know, I could do something like paragraph, dot mouse over, you know, change background. And then I could put this in, and this might be a more common scenario here where I'm now going to, when I mouse over that element, right, I'm assigning an event callback to that particular paragraph that I selected with the select function, and now I'm gonna execute this function on. So now as I move the mouse over here, Oh, that was so close. Anybody see what I missed here? Uh, oh, you know what I missed? Look at that. I made a sort of classic error. And actually, there's an error down here. It's good to have these mistakes. Uncaught reference error. Paragraph is not defined. Why is paragraph not defined? Because paragraph was declared as a variable in setup. Its scope is local only to setup, which is not available to us in this change background function. Now there are so many kind of JavaScript ways to get around this issue and it's going to actually come up in a wonderful way in the next video when we look at how to assign the same callback to like a hundred different DOM elements. Boy, that's going to be a great <laughs> moment. But for right now, just in our sort of simplicity here, I'm going to just make this a global variable and say paragraph.select. So now the paragraph variable is a global variable declared up top, so it's available in setup and in the change background function. And there we go, and now over here, I mouse over it and it turns purple. So you can see how do you, this is how you access an element. Now, uh, another place that might make sense for me to do this is to uh, uh, select that button. So if I want to select the button, the button has an ID. I gave the ID the name button. And uh, so pound button, button dot mouse pressed, and then you know canvas background. I'll write a function called canvas background, and then I'll say background, you know random 255. 
So now, this is also a nice way if you want to set up the layout of your page, have the button in exactly the right place, but not have to figure out how to do all that with create button. So instead of saying create button, the button already exists in HTML, I'm selecting it and assigning an event to it. So now, here we go, every time I click that button, you can see the background color changes randomly. So this is a nice way of working, just by giving your DOM elements IDs, selecting them in setup, and then doing whatever you want to them anywhere else in your code. Now, uh, I'm at 10 minutes, and I'd like these videos to be about 10 minutes. This one's gonna be about 15, because I have another piece of this that I think is really important to look at. We spent a whole lot of time talking about the different kinds of selectors. This is an ID. An ID is for a single item. But I could select by paragraph, which would select all of the paragraphs. Or I could select by a class, which would be select a group of paragraphs that have a group, sorry, not just paragraphs, a group of elements that are members of the same class. So what, what happens if we do that? Now let's, let's look at this. And I'm going to do something here. I'm going to move this unicorn one just down here, just to change the order. Uh, and I'm going to change this, comment this out, and I'm going to say select by rainbow. So this is selecting a paragraph of the class rainbow. What is there? Which? Hold on a second. <laughs> How many paragraphs? And actually, let's go back an even further step. Select P. This is just selecting a paragraph. But which paragraph? There are a lot of paragraphs. Hmm. A one, two, three, four. Which paragraph is it going to select? Or shouldn't it select all of them? Let's see what happens. Okay. Hover over this one. No. Hover over this one. No. Hover over this one. Hover over this one. Yes. So notice that when you call select with either a tag or a class, it will just give you the first element it finds on the page that's a member of that tag or class. But most likely, that's not really what you want to do. Most likely, the reason why you're selecting by tag or class is because you want all of them. And so in order to do that, the function select all comes up. So let's look at this for a second. This is selecting by a ID and you get a single element. What I'm suggesting to you is if, if I say select all by a particular tag, so select all the elements that, have, that are paragraph elements, what is this? I cannot say elements dot something because while this is a single DOM element, this is an array. So select all will give you an array of paragraph, 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 paragraph. So if you want to do something to all the elements, you have to individually address the elements of the array. And one way to do that is with a loop. So oops, coming back over here, if I were to change this, oh, I'm not over here. <laughs> coming back over here, if I were to change this to, uh, I'm just going to call it paragraphs. So I don't have to use an S, but I think it's sort of, and I were to say select all, now, I could say something like var i equals zero, i is less than paragraphs dot length, i plus plus, and now I could say paragraphs. Now, I'm going to um, index i something. Now, here's the thing. I want, this is, this is really exciting <laughs> because what I'm saying to you here is, let's say you have a thousand paragraphs on a page and you want to assign the same event to all of them. So whenever you hover over any of them, they sparkle or they change color or they get really small or they disappear, whatever that event is. There's a path to doing that and that's actually the topic of the next video. But it's a little, a little extra concept here that we're missing. So in order to simplify here right now, I'm just going to do something like say style and I'll say a font size uh, 16 and uh, 24 point. So what this is allowing me to do is any paragraphs that are on the page, I can just quickly, I'm able to access all of them and call a function on them. So you can see that if I just keep adding paragraphs, uh, right, uh, you know, like this, all of them are getting that size. Now, let's just take this one step further. Let's change this from, instead of selecting all by the paragraph tag, let's select all by 
the rainbow class, and we go back to the HTML file and, you know, orange, apple, apple, orange. So you can see the first, the third, fourth, the fifth, a bunch of those have the rainbow class. Uh, and I'll just change the content of these two. So now you can see only the elements that are of the class rainbow now have that font size. So you could select by an individual one using select by ID. You could select all of them, all of the paragraphs by a given tag, or you can select a group of elements with a given class. And incidentally, what if I make this button also a member of the rainbow class? You can see the button, they don't have to be, the classes don't have to apply to the same kind of element. So if you say select all P, you're only going to get paragraphs. If you say select all dot rainbow, that class could go across paragraphs and images and divs and buttons. So you can group elements together that way. So I think this is a little bit scattered, but this idea here is how you can now start to think. So what I would say to you is find something you made or make something new. Make so Take the thing you made already. Make all of your DOM elements in the HTML file. Give all of them an ID. Give some of them a class. Uh, then go to your JavaScript program and try to select something by just its ID. Try to select some a group of elements by a class and see how you can get to um, see how that goes for you. And in the next video, what I want to look at is how you could select by a class. You could get like a thousand elements and how you could assign a callback to all of those without having to write a thousand callback functions. And that is, my friends, is going to be uh, a good moment uh, to expand your knowledge in things you can do with JavaScript and programming. Okay, so this is the, uh, this was a particularly long video. Uh, and I'm going to take a break and make the next one.